हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वॉज टेकिंग वाइवा एंड आई आस्क सम बेसिक क्वेश्चन टू ए स्टूडेंट सो इट वॉज अबाउट द ट्रांसपोर्ट प्रोसेस एंड आई आस्क वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट थ्रू द सेल में ब्रेन वाई दे आर कॉल्ड एक्टिव और पैसिव द स्टूडेंट केम विथ सम आंसर बट इट वॉज नॉट वेरी सेटिस्फैक्ट्री सो आई थॉट आई विल मेक अ वीडियो ऑन दैट सो इट्स अ वेरी बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वाई सम ट्रांसपोर्ट्स आर कॉल्ड active and others are passive uh, if you see the comparison there are two important features that differentiate between active and passive transports uh if you look at the passive transports they are called passive because they do not require atp no atps are utilized for the transports uh the passive transports uh on the other hand when you say a transport is active atps are consumed so that's one basic difference diffusion is a passive transport uh a simple or facilitated but it's a passive transport it wouldn't require atps but primary active transport like sodium potassium pump uh, or secondary active transports also atps would be consumed and the second important differentiating feature is that the passive transports are downhill transports a uh, net transport when we talk of a passive transport the net transport occurs from high to low concentration downhill high to low concentration uh on the contrary the active transports where atp is being consumed they are called as uphill transports that is the transported molecule transported substance is going from its low to its high concentration uphill so low to high concentration is the transport which is active transport so these are the two basic differentiating features uh between passive and active transports an example as i mentioned uh passive transport diffusion active transport the sodium potassium pump the primary active transport or secondary active transports like sglt sodium glucose transporters so that's one part of the story now talking about the active transports further uh it uh, let's dig deeper into this concept we mentioned that atps are consumed but we need to understand something more about this atp consumption so active transport is basically of two types based on how and where the atps are consumed let's understand this a uh, little further the active transport will be called as primary active transport when atps are consumed directly atp used directly that is the transport protein the transporter uh, it will bind the atp it will break down the atp and then and there energize the transport of those molecules right so example most common example sodium potassium pump secondary active transport well a uh, secondary active transport is when atp use is indirect atp is used indirectly what do we mean by indirect use of atp let's understand this look uh let's draw a typical cell all right and its membrane so it has a primary active transporter like sodium potassium pump the most common one present everywhere now what it does is it will bind the sodium it will bind the potassium and it will bind the atp also 
ATP breakdown will happen then and there and sodium and potassium both will be moved from their low to their high concentrations respectively. So sodium will be sent from inside to outside that is from low to high concentration and potassium will be brought back into the cell brought from outside to inside again uh, from its low to its high concentration. So both sodium and potassium are moving against their concentration gradients after having uh, utilized I mean after having broken down the ATP. So that's the primary active transport. Now what is so direct use of ATP right ATP was broken and uh, movement was energized. What is secondary active transport then why did I say it was indirect use of ATP. Now look primary active transporter has created a concentration gradient for sodium. Isn't that right? Sodium has been pumped from inside to outside which means what? Which means now thanks to this primary active transporter uh, sodium will be now high on the outside and low on the inside. Secondary active transporter the carrier protein which is involved in the secondary active transport uh, now it will utilize the concentration gradient of sodium okay the potential energy stored in this concentration gradient that pull in the sodium concentration gradient will be utilized by the carrier to carry two substances one of them will be definitely sodium which will be now brought back into the cell high to low concentration because that high to low concentration has got certain pull certain potential energy and that is being utilized by the carrier and as it is carrying sodium it also takes the opportunity and brings another substance let's say glucose for example the second substance will be moving from its low to its high concentration and therefore for glucose which is moving from low to high concentration we will call it secondary active transport of glucose okay so why active because ATP has been utilized somewhere where in the primary active transport it created a concentration gradient for sodium and that concentration gradient that potential energy that pull on the sodium will be utilized by the carrier to carry another substance along with sodium okay sodium will be now uh, pulled from uh, uh, along its concentration gradient and the second substance will be benefited of that uh, pull and it will go from low to high concentration but it's secondary because ATP was not used directly by this carrier protein so this is called as secondary active transport what you should also notice is that in the case of primary active transport if there are two substances sodium and potassium both of them will be going from their low to their high concentrations respectively but in the case of secondary active transport which is very much based on the primary active transport of course in the case of secondary active transport one substance is definitely going from high to low concentration and that transport that pull that potential energy is being utilized to transport another substance from its low to its high concentration by by that carrier protein involved in the secondary active transport. So this is in, uh, in summary in short the comparison between passive and active transport and in active transport primary and secondary where uh, ATP use is direct or indirect. So a basic very basic and small little concept.